If you want to effectively lead and manage a team, your interpersonal skills will be more important than your technical skills. This is because people are emotional beings, and balancing the emotions and behaviours of your team so that they perform at their best is a constant requirement in any leadership role. This was recognised in industrial settings as organisations relying purely on autocratic systems found it hard to hold on to workers post-World War II. But it wasn't until the late 80s that research was conducted and a new field of study was born. Emotional intelligence is defined as the ability to understand and manage your emotions, as well as recognise and influence the emotions of those around you. The term was coined in 1990 by researchers John Mayer and Peter Solovey, but was later popularised by psychologist Daniel Goleman in his book Emotional Intelligence, Why It Can Matter More Than IQ. The work continued to be undertaken to create EI and EQ models that were understandable and usable by individuals, academics and businesses to learn and implement real improvements in various contexts from schools and workplaces to even the home environment. Here I'd like to raise three, but I'll provide you with some links below to several others so that you can investigate these at your leisure. We'll start by looking at the ability model, the mixed model and then the big five model. The latter is a more personality driven model, but you'll see how it fits in. Number one has four aspects while the other two have five. So let's start with the ability model. This is the simplest to understand in my view, as it forms a simple matrix and considers how you use and manage emotions on one side, and then how you perceive and understand emotions on the other. Try and rate yourself say a one to five, one being not at all and five being excellent, as we go through each one. The first is perceiving emotions. This is your ability to understand the feelings behind someone's actions, facial expressions and words. Can you account for cultural differences? Would you get it right 100% of the time? Next is understanding emotions. What words can you use to describe emotions? Do you have a broad vocabulary at your disposal? Can you predict where one emotion may lead to another and what that would look like? Third is using emotions. Can you harness your emotions to bring about positive changes in your behaviour or that of others? How quickly can you change your mood to suit a situation? And lastly is managing emotions. Can you recognise and regulate your emotions and those of the people around you? If someone is angry, can you effectively help them calm down or cheer up? And what about you? Can you manage the fear or something that you feel in a social situation with ease or is it sometimes more difficult? The next model I'm going to look at is Goleman's Mixed Model. It's similar but expands upon the area of your effect on others. It consists of the following. Firstly, self-awareness. This is your ability to know your own emotions, your strengths and weaknesses, what drives you, your values and goals, and recognise their impact on others. Would you consider yourself highly self-aware? Next is self-regulation which involves controlling or redirecting your disruptive emotions and impulses and adapting to changing circumstances. How good are you at reacting positively to change? Next is social skill. Managing relationships in order to get along with others. This doesn't mean you have to have a large circle of friends. Instead it looks at the way people respond to you in social settings. Is it more or less positive than you'd like? Fourth is empathy which is your ability to feel and consider other people's emotions, especially when making decisions. Do you feel sad when you see someone who's sad? Do you feel happy when someone around you is happy? If yes, then you have the ability to develop your empathy. And finally, there's motivation, which is being aware of what motivates others and using positive strategies to encourage this. I think this model is best suited for application in the business environment as there's an emphasis on empathy and motivation, which are two very highly regarded skills within a team environment. But what do you think? Before I touch on the Big Five model, let's take a moment to reflect on the scores you've given yourself along the way. Are you surprised or is this self-evaluation on par with what you expected? Anyway, let's now look at how we might use the Big Five model. As I hinted at earlier, this is psychology's best attempt to agreeing upon a universal model for personality evaluation. More easily, this is recalled as the ocean model. So it covers openness to experience. Are you inventive and curious or are you more consistent and cautious? Next is conscientiousness. Would you call yourself efficient and organized or extravagant and careless? 
Then there's extroversion. Are you outgoing and energetic? Or are you solitary and reserved? Are you energized by groups? Or does that experience drain you? Then there's agreeableness. Are you more friendly and compassionate or critical and judgmental? And lastly, there's neuroticism. Do you consider yourself more sensitive and nervous or are you more resilient and confident? This set of self-reported sliding scales helps to create an excellent picture of a person's personality and therefore the best ways in which to interact with that person, even if that person is you. By being aware of and utilizing one or more of these models, you're in the position to develop the evaluation criteria for your own as well as others' EI. Robust testing will require an investment, but there are simple free tests available for you to try, which I've linked below. So have a go at one of those, and I'll see you in the next video.